Hello, you're listening to Headstock. I'm your host, as always, Gav. Joining me today is the two Stu's, Papa Stu and Stuart. How you doing? Doing Fine. well, thanks, Gav. Yourself, mate? Yeah, good, good. Um, aye, we've got a lot more to talk about than we did last week. We stretched it out really well, but we've got a lot more talking <laughs> points this week, which is which is really exciting. Um, how was your weekend? Well, made all the better after Sunday, I've got to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Bit, bit of a quiet one on Saturday. Had to do some work, needs must and all that, but... Mm. Yeah, not not too bad overall. Yourself, yeah. Papa Stu, how'd you go, mate? Oh, fine. Uh, Saturday, I can't, you know, oh, where was it Saturday? I can't even remember <laughs> what I did on Saturday, to be honest. <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> you enjoy the boring. boxing? Yeah, watched, uh, watched the boxing in the bar on Saturday night. Uh, I, can't, I think it was Thursday or Friday I got locked in the bar. I think I told you guys. <laughs> Well, not actually in the bar. I got locked out of the house. Um, Adele, uh, don't know what she was thinking about. She left at 11 o'clock at the bar and uh, locked the house. I so know exactly I came... what she was thinking, mate. Yes, I, so, when I, so, so, when I came out bar, <laughs> so when I came out the bar, I think it was maybe Thursday night, and uh, I came out and uh, couldn't get in the house. So I had to go back up to the bar uh, and... I actually just slept on the city. So uh, half past six, I got in the house when she got up. She was wondering what the hell was going on. Where is he? <laughs> Did you at least have like a blanket? I don't know later. Or... What was that, Gav? Did you at least have like a blanket or anything to keep you warm during the night? Oh, aye, aye. Oh, it's a central heating, of, as you know, the, the bar. Right. And I've got a, a three a three piece of uh, city and all that. So, aye, and, it, and it comes up at both ends. So it was like a bed. But it's still more the same. It's not your bed. No, but when, no she, but when she woke up, she was like, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she felt really bad. So I, I think uh, uh, I got to uh, breakfast and dinner. And she, was felt, <laughs> she felt sorry for me. So anyway, and then on Saturday, we were, we were in, both in the bar. Uh, and then, of course, Sunday, which right. we're going to talk about. Yes, uh, let's, 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 let's jump in. Obviously, we're talking about the Motherwell game and then looking ahead to the Aberdeen game. But let's have a talk about the Motherwell game first. Um, I said, I don't know if you guys were on like social media in the morning and stuff. I, I know, and I noticed a lot of buzz about the game. You know, I think Motherwell away is always a fun game. You know, full stand, uh, the Scottish Cup quarter final, uh, Hamden. You know, on the line. And uh, like I said, I, I was excited. I felt a lot of people were a lot more excited than I was. And then I seen the lineup, and I got even more excited seeing Melkerson start. Um, you know, that front three. We put out the tweet about the fact that it was a nineteen-year-old, a twenty-year-old, and a twenty, 20 uh, twenty-one-year-old with the front three. And uh, Patrick McPartland of the Edinburgh Evening News done the maths. Uh, the average age of Hibs starting 11 yesterday was 21.3. And that's with Lewis Jeez, Stevenson man. in the team. Uh, yeah. And Joe Newell really, as well. Really exci- was, what's that? Joe Newell, Joe, uh, yeah, sorry, Joe Newell is 27, 28. So that's yeah. going to be skewing the number a bit more as well. Really exciting. Good lineup. to see. Really yeah. good to see. Yeah. Um, but the game itself got off to a really fiery start. Uh, Bevis Mugabe uh, goes in late on Doig. No hesitation from the ref. Red card. Was this the right call, boys? For me, yes. Um, irrelevant if it was in the first minute or the 90th minute. I hate it. It was a bad tackle. It was a bad tackle. You know, this, for, you know, the commentators didn't say it, but I've said it before. Just because it's the, last, the first minute, or you've, you're supposed to give the, the player... Oh, no, it's okay. He's just settling in. Rubbish. He, he had a straight leg, and how, how Doy could be out? We don't know. He could be out for a couple of weeks. The lad had to go off. He was injured. So, yeah, definitely straight red for me. Must say, on first viewing, I thought it was harsh, which obviously is the only viewing a referee's got. Um, I know we'll talk about it in a bit more detail. I've never seen a referee lose control of a game as quickly as Willie Collum did on Sunday. That has to be a new record. Um, but multiple replays, you're seeing, uh, and I'm not a big fan of them, um, the kind of the freeze frame screenshots of it. As you said, straight leg. There's one point, it almost looks like he is going over the top of the ball. Um, so I did think it was harsh at the time, but yeah, probably the correct decision. Yeah, I, I like Papa Suits. Like you said Papa Suits, I hate that argument of, Oh, well, it's first minute, so maybe... No, no, it doesn't matter when it is in the game. That challenge, yeah, red card for me. Um, the game started, Gav. <laughs> exactly. Aye, uh, and, and then a few minutes later, a bit, quite a similar challenge. Maybe you could argue some differences. Uh, just a yellow for this one for Roberts. Would you, would you agree with that? 
for me, just as rash. Um, yep. More more studs showing. Um, I don't know what Doig did to the Motherwell team beforehand, but they were clearly <laughs> out to get them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I reckon you could have seen red there, so they could have been down to uh, to nine men uh, in the space of ten minutes. Yeah, I, I agree I, as well. It, it, it was a borderline red, uh, and as a ref going to give it just because uh, he's gave one, you know, five ten minutes uh, earlier. But again, it brings up very similar yeah, to the argument. Oh, it's I in know. the first minute or it's in the 71st minute. Um, oh, just because I've already given them a penalty or, or just because I've already sent somebody else off. Um, that you shouldn't be able to look at it. It should be individual incidents, but that's that's never going to be happening in a referee's mindset. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can watch it back. I, I did think it was a yellow, but he was very lucky. It's one of those ones where, you know, just it, 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 you could... You'd be struggling to argue if he did give a red, but no, nah, I think it was borderline, like you sort of said, and, and I think leaning towards the yellow. But, um, but yeah, like I said, anyway, I'm getting on with sort of more of the, the, the rest of the game. Um, it was a very windy afternoon, but I thought Hibs were kind of... It's good to see they were a threat from corners throughout the game. Um, even if it wasn't directly, there was, there was a few chances. But you know, Henderson uh, put one in, and it was cleared only as far as Dre Wright, uh, and a good volley from him uh, for a really good, good early chance. Uh, and then I have to say, Tim and Motherwell did start to put us under a bit of pressure. I was a bit concerned. They had a few chances, a few corners himself. Um, and Macy made a really good save. He, and uh, when he saved it, he kind of pushed it away as well, out of danger, which I thought was good. But I mean, uh, Stuart, Macy's someone who's got a bit of pressure on him. Uh, Big Kev's came in, a few good performances, a few clean sheets, only the Rangers games, the games he's conceded in. And Macy's got his jersey back, but he's got a bit more, somebody breathing down his neck now. Very much so, yeah. Um, not that um, Matt did anything wrong yesterday, but he was the kind of the one that I saw on the team sheet and I went, Kev's been dropped again. What has he done to to warrant um, being put back onto the sidelines uh, for him? But I thought Macy yesterday commanded the air very well quite a few times uh, as well. Definitely plucked out the air right at the death as well, which was fantastic. Just took a heck of a lot of the... Uh, pressure off the uh, the keeper uh, off the team sorry um, even managing to get booked for time wasting well done to him also <laughs> signing a good cup tie I picked her on keeper to get booked honestly <laughs> <laughs> about half an hour to go ah I can't believe it I put Kelly I got 11 Macy was 12s y- uh, you were absolutely right Gavin saying Motherwell we're starting to put us under a bit of pressure and th- this must be the, the podcast of football cliches today but Sometimes it can be tougher playing against 10 men than it can playing against 11. Yeah, it did, it did seem to kind of rile them up after a couple of minutes. They had, you know, take, um, I, Motherwell did um, start to put on a bit of pressure, but Hibs dealt with that. Um, I'm going to give my praise to Jasper um, whilst I describe the goal, <laughs> and then you guys can kind of speak afterwards. Um, so Cadden wins the ball really well and gives it to Jasper, who's about halfway through their own half. Uh, drives down the line, quite a bit of trickery. A wee bit of luck as well, but, you know, he's, he's got his left foot out and reads it well and, and gets into space. And then Chris Cadden, I hope you're taking notes, he looks up and sees where the players in the box are. <laughs> and then he sees Melkerson's run, he sees Muller's run at the back post, and he whips a ball on with pace, and Melkerson attacks it. Doesn't need much of a touch because it's a really good cross. Hibs go 1-0 up. Um, Pavis, you start with yourself. Jasper and Melkerson praise, go. <laughs> Jasper... What did I say the last time? Uh, and then Stuart Stu- Stu- tries to take the bloody plug. We, we all said it. We didn't get the oh, right, 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 okay. We were yeah. all praising them and saying it was just that final ball. But uh, yeah. And they got right. done it today twice. I know. Right. I got I got the stick from my mate, Kenny, who Kenny Fisher, who listens to this every week. And he was he sent me a text. He went, You fucking kidding. Ronaldo. And I I said <laughs> He was like a very, very young Ronaldo. A way back with Man United, he would get into positions, unbelievable trickery, and then he would try and do it himself and then get beat. Uh, that's what he's doing. But yesterday, what did he do? He, he just played that vital ball. Fantastic. And another thing, who should be watching that, and I know he's injured and I feel sorry for him, is Nisbet. What did I say all these weeks prior up, up to that game? We need a centre forward who's going to get to the front post. You know, and Nisbet done it against our growth. 
And then young lad, Melkerson, done it yesterday. Got in front of his man and he was doing it every time. Melkerson was running and getting in front of his man. Now that is hard for a centre half to mark a centre forward is when the when he runs on the blind side of the centre half and he's trying to watch where he's going. And that laddie has just got it in abundance. He does it all the time. So a great ball from um, Jasper, but the run to make that was fantastic. Really good. And of course, what a goal. Fantastic. I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, being the first person to highlight how good Jasper is, uh, I was delighted to see him. Uh, as you said, Gav, a little bit of um, luck with the deflection, able to keep on it, but great pace, great accuracy on the ball over. And Malkson, fair play to you, running in, put a very, very powerful header on it. Nothing the keeper could do. Absolutely brilliant. And even better, took a lot of the pressure off because all of a sudden you've got the 10 man. Um, scenario coming there and in front of a massive away support for Hibs absolutely yeah. brilliant as well see yeah. the other thing Gav it's that ball in between the centre half and the goalkeeper and that's the ball that you need because the goalie does he can't go for it the centre half's toiling you know we've seen the uh, blockade uh, down in Man United scoring his OG you know mm. what happened that, that's that's the thing. That's where you put what you put the dangerous ball is in between the goalie and the centre half, and that's when your but your, your centre forwards have got to make that run to make them you know the centre half put his leg in his head in and whatever. So it was it was a fantastic ball, and I rate Jasper oh so highly. And I, I don't know what I, what what we are going to have to pay uh, Fulham. I know we've got the um, the first choice. Um, it's it's an agreed fee but I just whatever it is is it right I I, I do believe in it definitely got to pay it agreed yeah with the option I'm sure that's how that works Um, and and, and, uh, Melkerson celebrating with the the hand signal as well which is great for the podcast so do but um, everyone's seen it Um, I'm a big big fan of hand gestures you know wrestling you've got you know the undisputed era you've got the the elite you've got the (laughs) uh, the click bullet club I've got a hand gesture for you right now Gav bye (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah I'm a, I'm a big fan of that um I, I just quickly on that with the the nwo and the, the click and stuff uh just a quick like i i know, I know it's the hibs podcast for a lot of folk maybe don't know but razor ramon uh scott hall uh sadly had a bit of health issues over the weekend and his own life support and was getting taken off once his family have said his goodbyes but like i said i love uh, razor ramon growing up so just got a quick message about him and um, thoughts about him and his family and stuff uh sorry to bring was it down he a wee part bit. of was he part of nwo Yes, yes, he was. He was. Ah, the outsiders, him and uh, Kevin Nash came in, and then obviously Hulk Hogan joined, and then lots of people joined after that. But yes, yes. Um, aye, very sad. And uh, like I say, thoughts to his family there now. Um, but like I say, uh, in terms of the obviously, we mentioned Mueller there, he was on for Doig. We'll come back to the foot formation at the end. Um, Jasper, a lot of tricks and flicks, getting into space on occasions, and uh, even the started even like short corners were getting past them to kind of. You know, take advantage of his delivery. He's getting more and more involved, which is good to see. Um, uh, there's a cross from Henderson. Right, sort of miscontrols it, unfortunately, uh, just at the wrong time, and then flicks it back to Stevenson, but never tra- uh, troubling Kelly. Uh, and then Jasper, uh, in his own half, sees a bit of space in behind. Uh, long ball forward to Milkerson, uh, who times his run well, and then his first touch is chesting it down, Aww. and his second touch, cool as you like seen the phrase ice man thrown about papa stew what a finish absolutely brilliant and i want to ask a question does anybody know is he right or left footed i thought he was right footed. no idea no idea but because from that you know surely left but who knows <clears throat> well that's what i wasn't sure so if anybody knows could they yeah, let us know on uh, the hip stock um I, I, that was a that was a world-class finish um <clears throat> I was thinking, and, and, and I, I know I keep on saying it about Nisbet. If Nisbet went through there, he would have had to turn his body open to hit on his on his right because I don't think he would have took that on his left. Maybe I don't. I don't think so. But that boy, he hit it into the ground. It was like honestly that if if someone if if Ronaldo or Someone down south, a Harry Kane or Son, done that in the Premiership. They'd be talking about it for twenty minutes on Sky. Mm. 
that that was just what a what a goal, honestly. That, it, the fantastic ball over pinpoint accuracy from Jasper, but the touch and control on the chest was unbelievable. Um, yeah. Truly was, and yeah, well deserved leads. Um, brilliant to hear the crowds chatting his name again. That's going to do that, laddie. The world of goods, um, and kind of move mm. him on for the rest of the season. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Did you hear in his, whether he was ready or not? Did you hear in his interview, guys, that he, he told Jasper just to keep on looking for him? He said, mm. "Just play me in, look for me all the time." And it looks as if he's that centre forward that plays on the shoulder um, for running in like that. So, I uh, just a lot of goal. A, a lot's been made of his price tag already. Jane, just chuck it out there. What is a semi final at Hamden worth to Hibs? TV money, gate money, the find the four. No. Hundred grand on TV already, money, but <laughs> you, Stuart, you make a hundred grand on TV money, right? Um, it used to be about eighty grand, so I think it must be about a hundred now. And then you're talking fifty thousand at what twenty twenty pound, twenty five pound a pop. So that is that money must be about two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand. So he's paid for. He's, he's well half he's of that already. Himself. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope the, the the talk of the price tag um kind of starts to go away. Like we've paid what we've paid. It doesn't matter. I, I don't mm-hmm. care what we've paid. Like he's our player now. He's our player for a, a, a long, at least like I think it's a four year deal, five year deal. Can't remember. But hopefully he's here for even longer than that. Um, so I'm just really excited to see him play more. Yeah, and and it's encouraging as well. Like I mean, he's uh, you know we were saying about what kind of centre forward he is, but like I remember when he came in, he got, we got told he played anywhere across the front three. So I think there's going to be times where we're going to be see him play out in the right wing, out in the left wing, or in the number ten position. So he's, he seems to be versatile as well. And then when he's playing as a striker, like you say, very clever with his movement, encouraging that he's got that confidence to say the 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 winger look look for me all the time, and it paid off with with the two goals. Um, but a brace then, on your first appearance for your new club. Bravo. Yeah. Aye, yeah. Aye, yeah, really, really encouraging. Uh, and then just towards the end of the first half, uh, Newell's got the ball. It's a clearance. Unfortunately, it goes to a Motherwell player who picks it up. Um, uh, Roberts gets the ball, plays a 1-2, takes a shot slash cross. Don't know what, and then I think it's the FA heads at home. A weird goal to concede, Stuart. Really was, yeah. Um, there wasn't a lot of kind of disappointment or shouting from my end from it. Um I felt Macy was maybe caught a little bit flat-footed. I was wondering if his arm could have been stretched out a little bit more. But I think it's just a bit of a freak goal. Uh, it's nicked in off the inside of the post. And yeah, all of a sudden, classic Hibs. We're, we're putting ourselves under unnecessary pressure. Thing is, it was gone miles wide. It, you know, it, it, there was a possible chance if it was spinning, it, would, it could have went for a throwing. That's how bad it was. And it just came off, no, came off the guy's show, um, chest because he actually went for it. It was actually quite clever by him. But it was going that wide. I think it would have caught any goalkeeper out. Yeah. You know, really. Um, I, I don't think he was flat-footed because he still tried to get there. But I, I, I just, I just, thought, you know, that's, that's gone way, way wide. And they got the luck. That was it. Yeah. Uh, and towards the, the sort of just before half time, uh, Muller on, on the left hand side, uh, good cross in, and Melkson and Henderson both nearly on the end of it. You know, Melkson desperate for that hat trick. So that was encouraging to see, you know, dangerous ball and, and players try to attack it in the box. Um, the second half, we don't have as many chances to kind of talk about. Uh, Cadden putting a dangerous cross. Um, I mean, it was a cross where he just whipped it and hoped and see, but, you know, Dodge read it well and, and got a high header to it. Uh, if Cadden, I want Cadden to prove me wrong. Cadden's a good player, very good cross of the ball, gets to the byline well a lot of times. He just needs to look and pick out crosses rather than just hitting and hoping. That's my only feedback. Um, I do really like Cadden. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, Doidge um, met the, with the header and just not enough power uh, to trouble the keeper. Uh, and then, like I say, getting into the sort of dying embers of the game, Porteous gives the ball away, uh, which results in the Woolery shot. Um, if you watch it back, though, Porteous, he, he goes sprinting across towards the ball. McGregor's already there. McGregor and Porteous are right beside each other. I know Porteous is probably feeling guilty that he gave the ball away, Papa Stu, but like, He's got to be a bit more disciplined and get into his position, the right centre-back, rather than uh, rushing across and having two players right beside each other. Yeah, 
there's a couple of wee things that I wanted to pick up on Pochis. Love him. Great centre half. And it, it must, before I criticise him, they must be working on it at the uh, training. Because he gave it away twice. He was coming out right off centre. And he's trying to play that world, no, no world-class ball, but a, a splitting the midfield right through. And it's shot, it gets caught out, and we were on the fence again. Rather than playing it over to the right to whoever it was there, if it was Cadden, he's trying to ping that ball between two midfielders. They must, this, must be work, this must be what they work at training just to, to get rid of two players from the, the opponents. But there's a couple of times that he gets caught and he done it twice um, and put us back on the defence again. So, as I say, he must be getting told to do it. Yeah, these things are a work in progress. I'm happy to see my team tie things like that. Uh, but yeah, I think we're potentially a bit lucky that shot from Woolery was something else. That was absolutely flying. There's no chance any keeper's getting that um, for it. But thankfully, a bit of a, a sigh of relief and we were able to uh, to kind of see that one out. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very close. Uh, but thankfully, just over. Um Newell uh, played a lovely ball forward to Jasper. Uh, Jasper sort of crossed uh, to the 18-yard uh, Put across the eight yard box, um, but uh, the six-yard box, sorry. Uh, but the defender read it well and cleared. Uh, but Stuart, I mean, Newell, back, you know, once fit back into the starting lineup, what was your kind of views on his performance? Thought he was excellent. Really was. Um, if it hadn't been for um, the the man up front, Melkerson getting the double record, Newell was a good shout for man of the match. Um, nice to see him come back we have obviously had our demons to bear with Newell with regards to injuries uh, being told oh he's back this week and then not seeing him for another month but you know, great to actually have him in the lineup and look like he was never off the pace fair play to him yeah great, great, great to see him back in the team uh, and then Deutsch was told he was offside even though he started his run in the oh, zone half which don't. was frustrating I know that was um, mental yeah, I mean, I think uh, Deutsch was probably, you know, I mean, he's not the fastest guy in the world. He's probably going to run that to the corner anyway, but um, try and waste some time. But, you know, still, it was still frustrating to see because he was in, in behind in a bit of space and just a disappointing call. Uh, but, I mean, in terms of the talking points, Papa Stu, you mentioned it um, earlier before we started recording. The first half versus the second half, it was, you know, against 10 men, 2-1 up, maybe would have been, uh, it's a cup tie, though. Do you have to approach it differently? Well... Uh, I think I can't remember who said it um, on the TV. I can't remember which one it was now. Uh, one of the boys, I can't remember. Was it uh, McFadden? You don't have to keep on playing like a, in like a three pointer, um, you know, like a, a, a league match. It's a cup match, you're winning. Just see it out. I didn't like seeing it. I, th- I would, I would rather Hibs went for a jugular, as I said, and get another goal. But we were, we were, we were, we were letting them run. Uh, we were keeping the ball. But there was a couple of times. What was the one with Stevenson? You remember watching that? We've, we've never spoke about that one. He was about six yards out, and he done a wee turn and he, and he flicked the ball. You know, yeah. remember that one? He was like, "Shit, what are you doing?" But it's nice to see us playing, you know, out from the back, but my God, that could have went horribly wrong. And I, I just thought that playing against 10, ma- uh, 10 men, you just, you know, you attack and they wouldn't be able to, you know, we'll probably get another goal. But we were playing it too slow again. It went to, it went to the, the way that we've been playing the last few months. Yeah. And that wasn't good enough for me in the second yeah. half. You got two Hibs goals in a game. What more do you want? Come on. Ah, no, but, yeah, no, no. I wasn't complaining, sure. I'm just saying is it, <laughs> it could have went was. wrong. It could have went wrong with a couple of passes across the six yard line. Yeah. You know, and if it did, we'd have had egg in our face because, you know, that but why not just go there and you know, if they if they're a man shot, would would we not be better attacking? But we've seen yeah. it out. Listen, I'm not complaining. Honestly, guys, I'm not complaining. We're, we've seen it out and we're in the next round. You know, we're in the heart. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, 
And in terms of the talking points, Muller came on uh, for Doig. Apparently, Doig is just an impact injury, so hopefully isn't going to be anything serious. Hopefully not out for too long. Uh, Muller came on. It was out, uh, um, we'll talk about the formation change in a sec, actually. Uh, but then was subbed off against Stuart. A, a, a strange one. Yeah, you never want to either. be... Yeah, you don't. You never want to be known as the sub who gets subbed. Um, maybe slightly different when you're coming on in the first ten minutes due to an injury. Um, wasn't Miller's game yesterday? Uh, sorry, Liam from the other Hipstop podcast. He's not going to like me for saying that. Um, but yeah, put put it behind him. Um, we've discussed Miller at length. We know he's been here since before Christmas. He still just seems to be that bit off the pace, not quite understand us. Um, I think he will come good. Uh, but no, yesterday just wasn't his game. Yeah. Um, hopefully, like I say, comes good soon. But so far, for, I like was, was, he looked frustrated as well coming off. Um, I don't know if it was at the, the the situation or just at the bench or what. But um, hopefully, see more of him soon um, and gets up to full fitness. He maybe maybe needs it might be you know one next season after a full preseason we see the best of him. But we'll see. Um, uh, tremendous scenes at the end as well. The you know a lot of the photos going about um, and the videos and like say the, the the Maloney getting all his players you see him like you know ushering yeah. the, a lot of the, some of the players that weren't you know up towards the fans uh, you know that real togetherness really working towards that so brilliant scenes at the end as well um, the draw talking tonight, of that, that was, togetherness sorry, as well yeah no sorry talking about that togetherness um, few people in the media and Graham Alexander criticising. Hibs for rushing the referee at the red card decision. Now, this is something that I'm used to, that we're used to seeing down south um, and uh, in other teams up here. Why can't we do it? I thought it was fantastic to see. Yeah, put the referee under pressure, make him think about his decision, opposed to just standing around assuming he's going to do the right thing, because we've definitely been on the wrong end of those decisions far too many times. I hate it. Like I hate, I hate when any teams do it, and I hate when Hibs do it. You're not my youth um, fan. Who the hell can you hate that? <laughs> I, hate, I hate every team <laughs> doing it, but I, I, I think you know, I, I, they introduced that law a few years ago where the captain's the only one that speaks to the referee. For instance, and the amount of teams that just didn't, I, I like to see refs getting any players that go up to them that isn't the captain about an incident, just book them all. Like just, uh, just I, Gav, I, want to, I want to stamp to it. Gav, if I was the referee before the, because he always goes into the changing room before the match and tells them what he's thinking. If it was me, I'd be saying, if anyone is coming along, you know, running to me and wanting me to either book or send off a player, you'll be in my book first. Because I don't like it. And I know where you're coming from, Stu. It may be influenced. Well, what I'm saying, Gav, when you're into the game and one of your mates gets a straight leg into his his leg, it could have been broken, it could be whatever... Yes, you're you're hyped up. You're you know it's it, it's a match, you know you you're into that match so much, and you of course you're trying to do something. But I don't like this when they go like that. You know you see a lot of the foreigners. I don't like that. But of course you've got to say, come on, ref. You know, but you you're not going to walk up nonchalantly. You're going to run up to them. Mm-hmm. But if if I seen any player going like that, that's that's a that's a booking for me. I'll agree with that. I don't like the gesture of the card. Yeah. 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 Um, but the draw is tonight. Uh, who do you want? Let's see. It could be, it could be Dundee United. Uh, but nah. It's probably going to be Celtic Rangers or Hearts. Who do you want in the semi final? I'll take one of the old firm. I don't want Hearts. I, I think I think I want Hearts because I am not emotionally stable enough to go to a final against Hearts. So I, I want that all possibilities <laughs> of that ruled out. Um, I know a lot of folk would be like, oh, we'll get revenge, you know, 10 years, blah, blah. Nah, 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 nah. Not emotionally stable enough to go through it to a final playing hearts. I don't want... I, I'd rather play one of the, the old firm. Because if, if you're going to beat, if you're going to beat, you know, the best, you may as well get into the final. Well, you, you've got to beat one of the, the old firm. Um, hearts, I don't want to go to a semi-final and come... Come back in that bus again, and these clowns are, you know, at the at the at the roundabout with all their scarves and everything, their flags. Ah, no, 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 no for yeah. me. Sure. Yeah, I totally agree. No, I totally agree with you there. Uh, I think it will be uh, a tougher game for Celtic tonight. Dundee United definitely know how to play against the Mill from this season, uh, but they'll still go through Celtic. So it's going to be Celtic Hearts, Hibs Rangers. That's my prediction. 
I want uh, Dundee United in the semi final and Rangers in the final. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and it's imagine, the, uh, uh, and then the twenty first of May. Gav, That's yeah. true. Imagine beating yeah. Dundee United in the semi and getting Rangers in the final on the twenty first of May. Let's do it. It's happening. Six um, years apart. Come on. Right. <laughs> uh, and it's our 18th appearance at Hamden since the start of the 2011-2012 season. Um, Amazing, I, you know. I, I yes, it is. But at the same time, coming back with one trophy is is a bit disappointing, considering you know the League Cup finals we've been in and stuff. But yes, you got to remember, though, Gav. Oh. Gav, you got to remember what we've been through in that last 20 years. You know, we we've been down at the first division or oh, championship. Um, we've went through a lot of shit, really. We've never been a fantastic side, and yeah, we should have maybe won. Well, we should at least won the league cup against Ross County. That would have been the second mm-hmm. one. But for a team like us to get into the last four of all these cups, you know, because we didn't spend big. We're not, you know, we're not, we're not a big, we're a big club, but we don't spend on players, you know. We, we you know, so I, I just think that we've got to give the club um, respect of what they've done, because that's 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 phenomenal. Huh? Really yeah, is. getting to at least the final four of the two major cup competitions. Uh, another stat out there: we've been to the semi-final of both competitions for the last three years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That that's that's fantastic. That's brilliant. Um, that is brilliant. It's it's not saying that's good enough. We're always wanting to strive ahead, but we're laying some good groundwork right now. And uh, we were talking about it before we came on air. The eighties and most of the nineties was blooming <laughs> awful for for us yeah. getting to finals or getting to Hamden, um, things like that. So, God, make hay while the sunshine. Let's let's enjoy all these trips to our second home. Yeah, yeah and, and I like what Maloney says, Gav. Uh, Maloney um, was talking that we're building for the for the future for next year at least, and then onwards. So you know, he said we're we're going to get all our forwards in. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're building it for um, next year and onwards. So you know, I I I, I tell you what, we're we're in a no bad place. Um, and I know a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, we were like, shit, what's happening here? But even last week, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. Well, well, the thing is, Gab, we've said that it's going to, it's just going to start progressing and it's going to come that football that he's trying to play. And yeah, and it looks if you go back a couple of months or even one month ago, the players were not confident on the ball, but there's sometimes, well, the, yesterday. Stevenson on the six yard line. I yeah. said that to you. I'd wished we had that clip. I want to see that again. I'm going to try and find it. Right. He's how he did that. I was a, I, I, I wouldn't have liked to have been in the behind the goals there. I'd have mm. half in the mouth time. Huh? <laughs> but we're playing that nice football again. And and I, it's nice to see. So I, I, I I've I've got to applaud, give Maloney his due. You know, he was getting a bit of criticism, but giving them his due now uh, because they're I, starting to play well. I hate to be sound. I don't want to sound like a negative Nelly here, but at the same time, though, know, yesterday was brilliant. Um, and the first half, sorry, the first half was really good yesterday. Second half, yes, it's a cup game. See it out. Um, but at the same time, like there's a, there was there was positive signs about yesterday. But we've beat ten, beat ten men. There's that we asterisk beside it. Um. I'm not going to start jumping through hoops and think that's a top corner turn. You know, I'm no, not, no. I'm not oblivious to the three games before that where we didn't look like scoring. Um, I do have questions why it's taking so long uh, for Melkerson to get a start when he can do stuff like that. But maybe maybe at the same time justified in terms of waiting because um, you know he's, he's hit the ground running once he's settled in. I don't know. But anyway... Um, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not thinking we've turned a corner, but it, it's. It, yeah, oh, I'm hoping that yesterday was a step in the right direction. It's um, progression, Gav. Yeah, definitely. And we're, we're getting uh, there. Just to credit, uh, Barlos the cat at Barlos the cat on Twitter, uh, who did put up a, a, the list of the appearances of uh, teams at Hamden. That's where I got the the 18 appearances. So uh, credit him there for that. Um, so one thing I've mentioned a few times when we're going through the obviously with Doig going off, Muller coming on, there was a bit of a formation change. It was more of a four-two-three-one. Um, Muller and uh, 
Jasper out wide, Henderson behind the striker, and then a, ba- a back four, <laughs> Trey right at left back, which was a, a strange one. But understandably, with the um, against 10 men, probably a bit easier to do that. Louis at centre back, uh, obviously, we've seen McGregor come on. So, I mean, that change happened very early on, and then we've had a bit of success in score goals. If, like I just sort of said, caveated with against 10 men. Stuart, starting with yourself, is there maybe an argument that we maybe stick with this formation change at least short term? Like, I know we're, we're like Maloney believes in this back five, and Clark's going to be a big part of that and stuff, but Clark's injured, so maybe stick with the 4 2 3 one going for the next few weeks. Yeah, is there any sign of Clark coming back? Sorry, not, I know not your question. Uh... But I don't know. I, I initially we were kind of told maybe middle of March, and it is bang on the middle of March. So yeah, that's it. Don't know. No, I, I know there was know. some there was some social media pictures floating around of him back in training, which was good. Um, yeah, as for formation, it kind of goes back to Stu's previous point actually, from saying um, we're, we're building something. We can't just keep chopping and changing and mixing things up if we're wanting to solidify an idea a way of performing and things like that that all right there's always going to be chops and changes in games you want any manager to be tactically astute enough to be able to make adjustments whether it's for injury or to counteract what the the other team are doing but i'm a little bit more along the lines of kind of persevering for for now you know before we say anything else i've got to give credit where it's due dre right Mm. You know, I, I thought he played well yesterday. And Gav saying he went to left back. That lad, he just keeps his head down and does... Like that that one in the volley, that was a save and a half from Kelly. So, you know, Dre Wright, yeah, I, I, I can see why he's getting his game. Uh, he's been, you know, there's a lot of people still pounding that lad, you know, on, on social media. I, I just don't like it. It's, you know, he puts a green shirt on. Why are you always like this with players? You know, if you don't like them, why the hell go on to a you know, keyboard and, and start doing what you do? The laddie did well. And, yep, yeah, and I hope, I hope he, he gets recognition for it. Hibs always need a boo boy. We all know that. Yeah, I know, but, right. but that's, that's the fans, the fan base. Um, we should, you know, I don't know it's a minority. As we know, but you know, I, I thought he played really well yesterday, and I just wish that goal went in because he, he yeah. would, you know, he would have loved that. Um, and so, so the fans, but yeah, um, the formation, um, I, I was it's, it's, it's a tough one because, like, say, we're, we're, we're trying to say to stick to it, but at the same time, we've been we've for, been forced into a change because of an injury, and then we've yeah. scored two goals after that change. So, I, I, I like, is it to I, you know, we've not we've not scored two goals yesterday. Playing out from this five three two with the white uh, white centre backs, you know, overla- overloading or anything. That's not been the result of the goals yesterday. The, the goals came from you know a change in formation. Yeah, well, that's you can, you've got to give the the plaudits to the manager. He changed it, but I tell you, David Gray has a lot to do with it because for David Gray not being assistant, he talks more to Maloney than what um, Gary Caldwell does. I've never seen Gary Caldwell, you know, walking behind Maloney, tapping him on the shoulder and going, pointing, do this, do that. But David Gray, um, I don't know if he's talking to somebody up in the stand because he's always got his, his wee earphone in. Um, I don't know what he's what he's doing um, or who he's talking to, but uh, he's he talks to Maloney a lot. And Maloney I listens. That's, that's probably credit to Maloney for recognising that David Gray has been there the longest yeah. and probably knows the, the team, you know, better than him. Yeah, he's, he's only been there a couple of months, but, you know, lean on that experience and, and that'll be good experience for David Gray in terms of his coaching and things like that as well. Um, but yeah. like I say, in terms of the formation, it will be interesting to see how we line up uh, against Aberdeen, which is our next opponent. Um, so at the weekend, we uh, Aberdeen have lost their, uh, so a head-to-head, sorry, start with that, with Aberdeen. There's been two home nil, uh, one nil wins, uh, one nil to us the last game, one nil to Aberdeen at Petodji before that. They're on a poor res- uh, run of results, which we kind of touched on last week. Uh, the last 10 games, six defeats and four draws, that's including the cup game. Uh, the last two games, two nil to Hearts and one nil to Rangers. Uh, however, I guess it's maybe more of a um, positive thing for Aberdeen, Stuart, um, the the last game was the 5th of March, so their new manager has had a lot of new time with their, their new players. 
Yeah, they have. I've uh, got a buddy who's a um, big Aberdeen fan. He's not seeing a lot of the way of improvement just yet, but Goodwin is just in the door. Um, a little bit like ourselves, I think they are doing a lot of building for next season. However, we've got a semi-final of a cup to look forward to, so a little bit like care pressure off. He has written, sorry, my friend has written off um, top six. He's just going to say, yeah, yeah, bottom six, try some new things, get some new people in, let's get ready for next year. That's kind of where their mindset is. A game against Aberdeen, I've been going to Easter Road regularly since the early 90s. The amount of times, they're never spectacles of football, let's be fair. Um, they are, the amount of times that the, the poorer team wins is unbelievable. Um, I, I don't think we're going to see see something too entertaining at the weekend, I've got to be honest. Perhaps do you think uh, 14 days with his, with his players without a game... W- there might be some, we maybe have to be a bit more cautious that uh, Goodwin might have been able to implement a few things and get some stuff done in training. It's not like there's been an international break and players have been, been away. He's had his players for a full two weeks to prepare in this one game. Um, got to take the bull with the horns. I reckon we'll beat them, no problem. Oh. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very positive today. It's a Monday. Um, no, I, I, I just, I, I've, I've seen them play. Um, and I've, I know a couple of Aberdeen fans uh, and what they're putting on social media, <laughs> they're, you know, on Facebook and that, they are not happy. Um, and the way that he's playing, um, I know he's just in the door. However, I think that's why we'll beat him. I think we'll, uh, I think we'll, I think we'll beat them 2-0. That's my score prediction. I know you've no asked yet, Gav, but I'm, so that's fine. I, I really do. Um, I just think that Aberdeen... They don't offer anything. They don't mm. offer anything at all at the moment. And there's Stu's pal. They're saying it bottom six. Um, I think we're on a, a wee bit. I'm not saying I keep on. Just, I'm being too positive here, probably. But I, I, mean, I still you, think you that we turn the corner a wee bit. Yeah, I mean there there is ways to you know positively spin it. We're unbeaten in four. We have um, three clean. We've, we've only conceded one goal in four games. Three clean sheets in that time. Uh, and like I said, it was a bit of a freak goal. So, you know, we're, we're defending well. So, you know, that that's really good. And like I said, yesterday we, we added the goals to it. So there's there's definitely reasons to be positive. Um, it is a massive game, though. Like Aberdeen, you know, you're saying about that top six, Stuart. I mean, Aberdeen are five points behind us. You know, if they win it, then it might be more about other teams' opportunities to squeeze in. But, you know, Aberdeen fans might be giving up on top six, but the players won't. And they'll be saying this is a big game to, to close that gap. Yeah, very much so. But again, I'm sure Stu's pals will be kind of uh, agreeing with this um, from the Aberdeen point of view. They they just don't seem to be that motivated or trying that, that well. That seems to be one of the big criticisms that's coming from from Mami. Obviously, don't watch Aberdeen anywhere near as much. Um, but it it is interesting. I think they're just going to have another big summer. Uh, I know Maloney's indicated that we've already got uh, plans ahead. We're already kind of um, giving a good idea what we're going to be up to in the summer. They're going to be the exact same up there. Yeah. Um, and I mean, in terms of Hibs, uh, who starts up top for Hibs? Well, I would. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, it's, it, it, I don't think. I think that it was, should, that, was, if, that was a rhetorical question. Of course, it's Melkerson. But yeah, yeah. I, like. I think we should stick with the same team um, if 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 allowed with regards injuries uh, that started against Motherwell. I don't see I, I don't I, see why don't see why there should be any changes. I personally would make the change to the the four two three one. I I I understand you know what we, what you are saying. I made some really good points about stick with it and patience and you know that sort of stuff. But like I think there's there's players that are you know. Like I said, Clark's probably a big part of this formation that Moloney wants to play in, and he's not there. We've got players that suit the four two three one. Let's let's play that for the next couple of games. Big three games coming up. It's shown that it can work. Melkerson suits it. Jasper suits it. Muller suits it. Although probably didn't uh, show it as much yesterday. Henderson in behind. Newell and uh, Campbell is your two behind it. it, it you know, it kind of works for me. Um, but like I say, we'll, we'll we'll see how how Maloney sets up. Um, so uh, we've got Stuart's uh, Papa Stuart's prediction. Stuart, what's your prediction for the game? Oh, 
I'm fighting against every fibre of my being as I want to say a Hibs win, but I'm going to say it's going to be one all. Hibs are going to equalise in the second half. Uh, I'll, I will go uh, 2 1 Hibs. Another 2 1 Hibs. I think, you know, uh, yeah, I, I am a bit more concerned than you guys seem to be about the fact that they've had two weeks to concentrate on the one game, uh, a big game for them. 14 days to kind of prepare is a long time. But I still think Hibs are better. I think Hibs are in a better place. I do believe yesterday was the turning of a corner. So, um, and like I say, I feel more confident with Melkerson and the team that we're going to score. So, yeah, um, which is crazy because it's only been two goals in one game. But that's that's how good the performance was yesterday. Because um, like I say, even though he scored two, the worst opportunities they had that he could have got a hat trick in a few um, instances like we discussed about. So, so yes, um, I don't think I've got anything else. Um what so you, what have you guys got planned for the rest of your Monday? We're, we're, we're recording a bit earlier. Office, got to get in the office, do some work, better to do some insurance work than everything else. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, same here, working sadly. Aye, yeah, uh, I'm off today, but I've got a busy few days uh, after this, so it'll probably be a quiet evening. Uh, see Becca for a bit because I'll, I'll not see her the next few nights. I'm a lot of work over the next four days, but yes, and then off. Oh, the we'll be watching the match tonight. Forgot about that. We've got a game of footy tonight. That's oh, true. Uh, Man City away to <laughs> no, oh God. Dundee United Celtic. And Dundee United Celtic. <laughs> that was a that was a joke, of course. All oh, right, um, was it? Uh, it was a crap was. joke, Gav. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, 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 I usually do that sort of stuff to wind up Dave because uh, Dave really doesn't have much interest in the um, the English Premier League. Sure. So, aye. Uh, right. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so, what's yeah, the score going to be tonight, guys? Gav, what do you think the score's going to be tonight? What? 3-0 Dundee United. Shit. <laughs> no. Come on, Gav. For fuck's sake, come on. 2-0 um, two, two Celtic go, at a canter. I'll say 3-1 Celtic. Because they always... The lose a, Celtic are pretty poor at set plays. Um, so I think I think maybe they'll, they'll lose a goal. But 3-1 Celtic. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're listening to this um, before the... Uh, so the Dundee United Celtic game let us know your score predictions for that let us know your score predictions for the Aberdeen game uh, and your thoughts on everything we've discussed today and if you've got that clip of Louis doing the flick get that to Papas too uh, yeah get on get yeah, on Papas the that, uh, yeah, I can't remember but um, if you aye there was something else we asked um, but yes uh, hopefully the audio has been better today I apologise for some of the audio issues with my mic last week I, I believe it's the internet it might be one of the mics I've swapped them out anyway but apologies about that hopefully this has been a lot clearer um, so yes like I say follow us at HRC Talk we'll be back next week to look back at the Aberdeen game I believe it's an international break of that after that isn't there yeah don't know is it yeah, uh, we, we, we uh, would have been due to play Ukraine yeah. but apparently there's something going on over there yeah uh, yeah. so so is it still a break I take it yeah well there was talk break. that we were going to be um, playing Poland um, right. oh yeah friendly yeah yeah. yeah, but then Russia's only about six miles away from uh, Poland, their their border now. So who knows? We might not get Poland either. Uh, no. oh, I know. I think crazy, crazy, crazy over there. Um, we'll, yeah. we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, and just on that, I do believe there's still time to enter the competition for the um, uh, Frank Sosie with the Hanlon Stevenson Foundation. And um, like I say, we've, we've retweeted that. We're, we're, we're you know Kenny doing a lot of great work at the Hanlon Stevenson Foundation, raising money for Dinepro kids. So if you if you haven't already, sort of. Um, uh, I think it's but there's also a, a, a link to just sort of donate as well. So, like, say, let's try and raise as much possible money as we can. I think they were getting close in on fifty thousand the last I checked. So, fantastic oh, wow. money, uh, effort um, from Hamlet Steel well Foundation. So, yes. Um, so, like, I say, I've been rambling for a bit. So, we'll finish there. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Thanks very much for having us, Thanks nice again, you again guys. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. Cheers, boys. Cheers.